Hello, hello, hello. Happy May. Good evening. Welcome to the iBug Buzz number, uh, episode number 532. And uh, this is for Monday, May 2nd of 2022. I am Maria and I will be facilitating the conference tonight with Sandhya. This is, uh, this call of first roll is being recorded as you just heard. So if you need to tab or flick over to the got it button and uh, space or double tap so you can get your meeting controls back. So this is an open forum for anyone with questions or issues with their iPhone, iPad, iPod touch, Apple watch, or Apple TV, and for anyone desiring to become more proficient in using the accessibility features of these iDevices, we focus here on voiceover and the use of the same with different uh, apps and as well as different accessories, uh, braille displays, keyboards, headphones, speakers, and so on. So welcome to everyone who's joined in live and to those listening to the conference via the recorded podcast playback. So this meeting is being recorded and we have a few rules that we kindly ask everyone to follow to help to keep the meeting running smoothly and help it to be as high of a quality as possible. Uh, we ask that uh, all of you uh, stay on mute when not speaking um, to ensure the quality of the recorded conference. And when you do want to ask or answer a question, you can kindly unmute and then say your name and wait to be acknowledged uh, by one of the facilitators that is again myself, Maria, or Sandhya this evening. So um, just to be clear, we do not use the raise hand feature of Zoom for this call. Um, uh, very important also, please do not just speak out or make exclamations while others are speaking. Uh, when you do want to announce yourself, please do wait until there's a break in the conversation. Um, if you're speaking when someone else is, it's really distracting and disruptive and rude. So please just uh, wait for a, a bit of a break before jumping in. Um, and once you've asked or answered a question, we kindly ask that you give other participants a chance to do the same so that everyone gets a chance to participate in the meeting. So just meaning wait a little bit if there are others uh, before you ask your next question. And also very important to please minimize the background noise. That's your phones ringing and your people people talking in your TVs and your clock chimes and so on and so forth. Um, if we do have to tell you twice that you have too much of that background noise going on, then we may have to remove you from the conference. Again, nothing personal, just to keep the quality of the call as high as possible. So how do you mute and unmute you on the Zoom in the Zoom app on the iPhone? The mute button toggle is at the bottom left corner of the screen. In the on an iPad, it is at the top center of the screen. On a Windows uh, PC, you're going to use Alt-A to toggle the mute. On a Mac, it's Command-Shift-A to toggle. On the Mac and PC, you also have a uh, space bar as a push to talk, meaning you hold it, you are temporarily unmuted, you keep holding it, you say what you need to say, and then you let it go and you're back on mute. It's like a walkie-talkie. And on a phone, if you are dialing in, you're going to use star six to toggle the mute and unmute uh, status. Uh, so now I am going to uh, turn it over to Sandhya to tell you about all of the super exciting, actually just some because we have so much going on. So to tell you about just some of the exciting things that we have going on in terms of events and also how you can connect with us and stay connected so you can find out about absolutely everything that we do because it's just so jam packed. So Sandhya. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, there's a lot to do. Let me talk fast. I can't talk as fast as you, Maria, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so here we go. Today is I Bug Buzz. That's what we're doing right now. And then tomorrow, on so all the times that I'm going to talk about are central time and you adjust accordingly. Tomorrow is Mac Buzz on Clubhouse from five to six. Come with all your questions about your Mac and uh, various uh, well, if you have questions about apps on your Mac or gestures or that kind of thing, that's the perfect place for those. Then, then, then Thursday is I'm a Trekkie Talk. Trekkie Talk, we're listening to or watching season four of Next Generation, the Next Generation season four episode. 14 and 15, episodes 14 and 15, we watch them ahead of time and then get together and discuss them. 
Ben, Friday's iBug Night at the Virtual Movies, and with those wonderful clues, if you're wondering what movie it will be, it will be revealed at the top of the hour. We hope that you will participate and try to guess with some of those uh, interesting clues that are proffered by our very own iBug guy. So good luck. And then, and then on Saturday, so I told you we had a busy week. Um, Saturday, we have iBug Unplugged, and that again is on Zoom on Zoom, and that will be at 8 p.m. Central, and we're going to be talking about kids stuff, kids stuff. I don't know what that means, but come and find out, and this is usually a more informal uh, way for all of us to get to know each other or those of us who are part of iBug. So uh, those are the events coming up basically for this week, and well, just one little quick note. Uh, we do have our book club next week, so if you want to get started reading or you didn't catch it, it's the it's called The Vanishing Half, and that will be on Thursday the 12th, and that will be uh, by Britt Bennett, and it's DB99791, so check that out. Okay, now, social media, as Maria mentioned. Okay, what's our social media? Our first best place to get started is our website, ibugtoday.org, I-B-U-G-T-O-D-A-Y.org. If you subscribe there, there's a way to register, then you'll get all of our notifications of upcoming events. Registration is free, as are all of our services provided here. Uh, let's see, if you would like to follow us on Twitter, you could do that at, at ibugtoday. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash group slash iBug today. You can go there and pose your questions, help other people with their questions. It's a great place to exchange information and get information. Then let's see. Oh, yes, something very exciting is happening and the day is getting closer. It is our drawing arc as we are a nonprofit organization and this is our fundraising effort. And so for a donation of $10, you can have a chance to win a gift card of $500 at the Apple store. It's a $500 gift card at the Apple store. That's so cool. You have think of all the things that you could buy for yourself or for someone else. And then if you want to improve your chances, you can pay a donation of $50, five zero, and get six tickets. So it's quite the bargain if you would like to do that. And remember, it's not all about you. You could buy somebody else a ticket and they will be very grateful if they win. All right, the, don the, uh, the drawing will be on Saturday, May 21st at our uh, 11th anniversary meeting of iBug Apple Workshop. So please stay tuned for details for that because that is not going to be your ordinary iBug Apple Workshop. It will be a celebration. So hope you'll come for that and hopefully good luck. We hope that you win. All right, Maria, I think we're all done. <laughs> all right. As you can tell, we've got just so much happening. So we hope you'll join us. With that, let's go around and uh, introduce ourselves. So you can uh, unmute, as I've previously described, to tell us your name and where you are from. So I'll start. I'm Maria in Albany, New York. Jody in New Hampshire. Hi, Jody. Well, this is Hi, Herbie, Maria. and I'm lucky to be home in Houston after being in this thing called traffic today. Ah, well, glad you made it. Welcome. All right. Anyone else that'd like to this say is hello? Brad, and I'm in Dallas. Hey, Brad. This is Dan, <laughs> Southern California. Hello. Welcome. Dee from Southern Illinois. Hey, Dee. This, this is Helene. Gay. From uh, hey, Helene. Welcome. And who else did I hear? This is Gail in Houston. Okay. Hey, Gail. Welcome. Hi, Maria. Dana in Ohio. Welcome. You, you were hesitating there. Are you sure you're in Ohio? I almost <laughs> forgot where I was from. <laughs> no worries. Welcome. Susan from Houston. Welcome. Sharon from New York. Welcome. Whoa, we have three New Yorkers. <laughs> well, <laughs> 
All right, anyone else? Thomas from Grand Junction, Colorado. Welcome. All right. It's Sandia in Houston. Welcome, Sandia. Anyone else like to say hello? All right, then. Uh, do we have any first time callers tonight? All right. Well, hearing none, welcome back, everyone. Glad you're joining us again. And with that, it's time to open it up for questions. So, this is Gail. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Gail. Okay. I had to get in fast because usually I can't even get it in. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. You're first. You were on top I of know. it. Well, I'll tell you, it's hard. Um, okay. I, I've um, had something weird, really weird. Um, my email, um, all of a sudden I had, well, I have AT&T on my iPhone, but all of a sudden I had all of these, uh, scam, uh, emails. When I say scam, I mean, all of these, I don't know when I was, um, clicking into, uh, you know, I went on to websites, you know, I was trying to read on Safari to Google stuff, but then I got all of this like Dyson vacuum and then just garbage. I mean, like about mm, prostate wow. stuff and then um, just you name it, just garbage um, one after the other. I mean, I still, you know, a lot of stuff that is uh, just garbage. And uh, my daughter was here last week. She just told me to delete it. But I thought the thing to do was to mark it as junk. But then I didn't know what to do because I didn't know. Um, I didn't want to click into it because I didn't want to get hacked. But I, I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just not sure what to do about all this. All right. So uh, who would like to talk about uh, managing spam and how to safely uh, is there a way to market as junk without opening it or any good tips for Gail? This is Jody. Uh, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I would just delete, you know, looking at your list, I would just delete the, you know, delete the message in the list without even opening it. And then the other thing you might want to do is go to settings, go to mail and turn off tracking. Uh, so that, um, turn you know, off track. The, the, yeah, turn off tracking so that, that there's no more ability for merchants or whatever to uh, follow you through your email. And you can also turn that off in Safari, which might be a good idea too, because if you turn off in Safari, then when you go to websites to look at things, it's not going to give your uh, phone address to the merchants to track you. So you can turn off tracking in Safari and in Mail. Okay, and that's uh -huh. in in mail. It, it, that's in mail and Safari. Yes, um, is that in settings or where where would I find that? Go to, go to settings and then go to uh -huh. the mail app and go to uh -huh. the Safari app in the listing, and then you can turn tracking off in both. Okay, and th and then um, and then when I um, delete it without even opening, because that's what I've been doing is just deleting it, but it comes back. So, but that's the thing to do. Just this is and, Brad. Then, and try that. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah. The best way to handle spam email is to go on to your eight. You have what? AT&T Yahoo yes. email. Just go to your AT&T Yahoo web portal and mark it as spam on the web access, because once it's made it to your phone, it's already, it's too late. The best way to handle it is on the AT&T server side. And if you do it there, it, it, it gets handled and gets sent to your junk spam folder, whatever they call it over there before it even makes it to your mail client on your device. Okay. I know it's a pain and I hate the website, but that's the best way to handle it. That's really the only way to handle it. You can send it to spam and the mail app on your phone all day long, but that's not where the source of the problem is. The source of the problem is on the AT&T server side or the ATT Yahoo, because Yahoo handles the mail. So it's, so it's in their it. side. So this scale, I got to open it up in AT&T. You got to then... go to a web browser. 
Okay. And um, I hate it. I I use Ira for that because it's a it's an accessible website, but it's a pain to navigate it. it. You know, I can get Ira to do it in 30 seconds and it take me 20, 30 minutes of navigating around that website. Okay. So I have Ira too. So just have them just mark all those as spam. Yeah. On the website. Well, there's a thing you mark them and then there's a thing up go in your inbox and then mark them as spam and it'll send them to spam and it marks them on the server side. And that usually takes care of it. But yeah, what Jody was talking about it actually, I believe the tracking thing is under privacy um, on, and then you'll find it for mail and, um, and the, and the breast Safari browser as well. But I believe you get to it under privacy. You may get to it under Safari and mail settings as well, but I've always gone under privacy and there's okay. turn off tracking. Okay. All right. All right. Well, good. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Good, good luck with that, Gail. Hopefully you'll be able to get rid of that. I, I think we all know how annoying spam is for sure. Okay. All right. Very good. Who would like to ask the next question? <clears throat> Feel free to uh, unmute and ask your question. Uh, Alt A or Command Shift A or the mute button on Susan. your device or star six. Uh, go ahead, Susan. Yes, good evening. Uh, I'll, I'll talk fast and go on mute. My question is, um, I'll use today for an example. On my iPhone, I was trying uh, badly to um, use the call waiting. I was on the phone with Metrolift to pick me up from where I was. And then they were calling me, and I always have a hard time with that call waiting button, you know, hold and accept. And since I can't see it on the screen, and the voiceover is telling me that it's on there, but I can't figure out how can a blind person uh, figure out where to put your finger at, um, or can you... I guess use two fingers and double tap. I guess that's how you do it. Can you do that anywhere? Or do you have to figure out, okay, I have to go to this spot to do it? So that's my question. All right. All right. Good question. So who would like to talk about that? How do we answer an incoming call when we're already on a call? Or how do we navigate that dialogue if we don't want to answer that call? <laughs> it's Jody again. Okay, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, uh, you can do a two finger double when you're on a call and you get another call, just do a two finger double tap and it will uh, hang up the first call and then answer the second call. And you can you do a two finger double tap anywhere on the screen. Make sure your fingers are separated enough that the phone doesn't see your two fingers as one. So you wanna you know put about an inch between your fingers. All right, very good. Anyone else on this one? All right, um, I'll make a quick comment, Susan, that also you can, um, if you do want to pick some of those other options, you can flick around so you don't have to explore by touch. Um, if you just uh, like touch somewhere on that screen to make sure it's in focus, then you can flick to the left or right to navigate uh, to the different controls and then you know double tap to activate it. So you don't have to use um, explore by touch there as long as you might have to, like I said, initially just like touch the center of the screen to make sure it's focused, but then you should be able to flick around. So hopefully you should be able to get to all of the controls. If like, say you don't want to answer that one and you want to, um, you know, like decline that one and stay on your current call or something. Okay, thank you. Appreciate y'all's right. help. Very good. All right. Hey, this is Dee. Go ahead, Dee. Okay, Susan's question made me think of one. All right. Okay. Used to, if I was on a call and another call came in, I could flick over. Well, I can still do this. I flick over to hold and accept. So okay. then I get the new person. Mm -hmm. But when I'm ready to hang up with them, I used to be able to flick back and I forgot what it said to resume that other call. And I can't find a way to do that anymore. 
Ah, okay. So, because somebody how told me how to... to get my original call back. Yeah. All right. Who would like to answer that question? This is Herbie. Yep. Go ahead, Herbie. So, just to understand, Dee, so you're on another call and you want to go back to your first call? Yes, sir. So, when you're on the other call, when you, you should see a hide keypad button at the very bottom. And when you do that, you're going to see a list of options. And one of them is going to be swap calls. And so then you simply double tap that button and you may have to check because it may bring up the keypad again, but it may put you on hold. And so you may have to go to the hide keypad and or unselect the mute button rather. I think it's mute, not hold, but that's what you do to switch between calls. And that's, um, I think they could make it a bit easier, but that's how you do it. Well, so Herbie, just to clarify, so Dee was saying, so when she's uh, when she hangs up with one of the calls and the other one is on hold, um, how she's wanting to know how does she get back to that so call that's on hold? If you do a complete hang up, that's going to hang up both of them. What you have to do in that case is the hide button and then either the swap button and let the other person hang up or the end button. And I believe that end button just hangs up that particular call. Okay, this is D. All right, go ahead, D. Yeah, used to, there used to be a thing down there, like where it says hold and accept, it would say return to call or something. And I don't know when they changed it, but I've had other people tell me, well, if you let that person you're talking to hang up, then your original call will be right there. But that doesn't work for me. If they hang up, I still not able to get to that person, the original phone call. Hmm. And that's even if you have you tried this, what Herbie was uh, saying in terms of hiding the keypad. And then do you have an option there? Like, I know I've seen it's been a while since I've done it, but like I've seen um, like a, the hold button on the first call and it's selected. Uh -huh. And then if I, it says hold select or uh, selected hold. And then if I double tap that, it becomes unselected. And then that calls come back. I have experienced that. Um, it's, it's been a while. So. Yeah, yeah. I think I've tried that before too. And it didn't work. I don't know what's happened. Oh. It just used to be so simple. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like this is a good feature for someone to, uh, do some kind of playing with and maybe like an eye bug bite segment or <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. So, right. Okay. Anyone, anyone else on this one? Any other ideas? This is Sandhya. Go ahead, Sandhya. I've had the opposite problem. Like I thought I was done with one person. Like, okay, I got to go. And I go to the second call and then they're still, then, you know, you hang up and then they're still there. Oh dear. Like, what are you still doing here? And that was like <laughs> not a good thing, you know? So <laughs> yeah, because they know yeah. then you're trying to ditch them. I know. The <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, and I'm like, what are you doing? It was Mr. McCulloch. I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, well, you didn't hang up. I'm like, I didn't think I had to hang up, but <laughs> apparently I did. And he was just sitting there. So anyway, okay, that's all. It's the opposite experience. Oh, see, it sounds like it's not a user issue then. It sounds like it's some weird ios issue <laughs> who knows weird all right well good luck with that hopefully uh something will get straightened out soon if it's some kind of a bug okay thank you <laughs> all right <laughs> very good all right who would like to ask the next question Or make the next comment too, if you have, sorry, if you've, uh, you know, I don't know if you've played with some kind of app lately or noticed some kind of bug or something that we should all be made aware of. Dana. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah. Um, I cannot figure out, um, say you're a, uh, writing a text or yeah writing a text or an email and you want something in all caps and uh then you go back to not all cap or lowercase 
Um, used to it used to be tap the shift key three times and it would be all caps now and then it sh the change to tap it four times and it would be all caps and now i don't know how to get it, how to do it i i tap it four times and it doesn't work hmm. all right how to make things in all caps and then get uh turn that off <laughs> when you're ready to anyone have yeah. a comment on that Oh, Mrs. Brad. Okay, go ahead, Brad. Tapping the uh, sh uh, shift key four times is still working on my phone. Huh. I'm running 15.4.1, whatever it is, the latest yeah. version. I am two, and I have a 13 mini, and it's not working for me. I'm using standard typing. Are you? I don't know. Yeah. And well. Well, here's the standard answer. Have you rebooted your phone? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Actually, have you I... tried cycling voiceover? Uh, seriously, have you tried yeah. cycling voiceover on and off? Because sometimes if if you haven't restarted your phone or voiceover, I find when it's doing weird stuff, you know, I tell Siri, turn voiceover off, give it a second or 15 seconds and tell it to turn voiceover back on and Sometimes a lot of mysterious demons just disappear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I'll try that. Thanks, Brad. This is Sandia. Uh, go ahead, Sandia. I just wanted to know, Dana, is it like when you write things in all caps, just talk about texting etiquette? Does that mean you're yelling at people? Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Right. <laughs> no. Okay, just check in. Don't send yeah. me anything in all caps. Oh, wait, 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 wait. In his in in Dana's defense, like say he wants to write LOL. That is perfectly acceptable in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what he was gonna do. But okay. All right, thank you. No, okay. I'm not yelling at people. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Anyone else on this one? Well, this is Maria. I actually do have a different answer <laughs> on this one. Um, you, uh, it's act. I have actually found that it is um, an action on the shift key to enable and disable caps lock. So if you touch the shift key and then you swipe down, you'll get a cap. So you have your options of activate or caps lock. And then you double tap and that turns on caps lock. And then you do whatever you need to do in the caps lock. And when you're ready to turn it off, it will say shift uh, caps lock on uh, selected. And then you uh, let, uh, once you lift, again, I'm in touch typing. So once you lift your finger, it should turn off the caps lock. Um, and so, so that is how I have done it in the rare occasion when i know when i've used it using the uh, actions rotor so okay so so what you're saying is double tap on it and and swipe down i don't even to... yeah i don't know if you even need to if you're using standard typing you might have to double i'm not actually sure in standard typing if you even have to double tap on it or just touch it with your um you know brad. to be focused on it oh go ahead brad yeah just put focus on it then yes maria is correct you can you can use, you know, you're, you're by default, your rotor is on actions. So yeah, just put focus on it and flick up or down and you should hear that. Yeah. Uh, caps lock, okay. go to use caps lock. And then it'll be when caps lock is on, the option is, is turn off or whatever it says. Yeah. But yes, I've done that too. Okay. Thank you. All right. Very good. Don't yell at people. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Who would like to ask the next question? Or again, uh, make the next call. Yes. Who is that? Uh, this is Vincent. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Vincent. Uh, my question concerns messages. Okay. Uh, when I am uh, going to send a message usually I just choose uh, a new message and then it brings me to the uh, 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 to uh, uh, screen and I start typing uh, the name and uh, it gives me options for the person that uh, uh, I am trying to get to. However, 
I, uh, I am having issues with at least a couple of the contacts that I have in my uh, uh, phone book. Uh, I type there, sometimes I type uh, the, just the first letter, the second letter, third letter, and it doesn't give me that particular person as an option for a message. And I've tried it you know, several times, it, it doesn't bring that option. So I go to contacts and uh, I select, uh, pr from contacts I select the, uh, the person, one of the options is messages. I tap on that and then uh, it, it, it puts him uh, in the uh, to uh, uh, screen and I can type the message uh, later on. Any idea? I, I've checked that. I, I don't know what to check anymore. Uh, it, it's like it's not all my my uh, my uh, uh, my contacts. It's just like two or three of them where I have that issue, and I wonder if anybody has that type of issue and how they solved it. Wow. Okay. Uh, has anyone experienced this? Yeah, interesting. That is a puzzle. Have you, ha are you able when you type? Because the only thing I can think of, I have had some times where my phone gets in this funk where like if I go to either two or like even search in contacts, it's like it's not entering the letters. So that's why it doesn't pull up people. And then I restart my phone. That's, it's only happened a few times, uh, but I've had that happen to me and then it has worked. Um but yeah, I have not had, so like, I assume when you're typing in the two field, you can see those uh, letters that you're typing in, but then it's just showing you like not the actual, it's showing you other results, just not the one you want. Uh, that's this correct. is Greg. Yes. Yeah, weird. Um, who is that who wanted this, to? This is Greg. Oh, Greg, go ahead. Yeah, I've, I've had the same problem and I haven't figured out, I do exactly what you do. I, I haven't figured out a, a way to solve that problem. Mm. Oh. Okay, wow. and, and I've also had the same issue that you mentioned, Maria, where the phone is, but uh, I, I don't remember if the iPad is also, well, no, the iPad is also unresponsive many times, and uh, I have to just uh, uh, close, like, close all the apps, uh, uh, and then sometimes I'm able to get uh, 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 the uh, uh, voiceover on, back on, I turn voiceover off or try to turn it off sometimes and it's not uh -huh. responsive and sometimes uh i have to uh to actually turn off the device uh this happens yeah. more con more often when i'm uh, when i close my ipad and i put it uh uh when i close my ipad i usually you, you hear ping you know it tells you that it's it, it's off and uh, when i don't hear that it it's still on so I don't want it on. I don't want to you know, keep it on uh, uh, all the time, heating, whatever, if I'm charging it, I don't, I don't want to fire. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, that, that's also something that happens fairly often, actually, like maybe once every three, four days. I don't know if anybody has oh experienced gosh. that or has a suggestion. So you're saying this is the issue that I was describing with the, right. the search and that it's happening when your iPad, it's like it's not recognizing somehow that you've switched from your iPad to your phone or something, maybe. Uh, no, I'm actually closing. I'm, I, let's say that I'm finished, oh. uh, 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 whatever it is that I was doing, like you know, movie night or something. Yeah. And, and I go to close it, uh, to charge it, and it doesn't turn off. It doesn't. Oh, it doesn't wow. give the sound that, that tells you that uh, it's disconnected or off. It it yeah. it's, it's on. So if I if I open it, it's still in in. in I I try have tried closing all the applications that I had open, and uh, uh, it doesn't work. And uh, oh, many okay. times, I, most I I just turn it off and then charge it. In the following morning, I go through the whole procedure of turning it back on and entering right. my password etc right and then it works like what like the same thing that i was saying that it, sometimes i've had to restart my phone yeah yeah oh it's uh, just maria this is oh. jerry from vermont how are okay. you I just hey jerry a, how's it going hey good uh, good did you have a comment on this question 
I, I did. We've we've had similar discussions on my Thursday night uh, chat thing that I do up here in Vermont for folks. And one of the things we've said with a, with a lot of this is, you know, how this thing about the app switcher has kind of gone out of vogue. People don't rely on it. Uh, we, we had some typing issues and I had an issue very similar to what you're describing. And what we've said is once a day, close all your apps on the app switcher. If you flick up with one finger, it will, you, it will keep you in the close thing. And you can just double tap and close everything out within two minutes, you know. Um, and, and that, for some reason, it clears something up, some buffer. I was having a problem with the dropping calls. And, and it's, it's, it's doing much better. And so is Siri doing much better, too. Um, and, and this typing thing, I go through it um, once in a while when I'm sending emails, the, the whole thing just goes dead, you know. Um, but I, I, then I, I, I get out and close the document and come back in, and it usually solves it, whether I'm using a Braille display or a keyboard. Um, but it, it's a pain to do that, you know. I, I think these things are so intricate now, and they're so overloaded with... Uh, with stuff, you know, that um, it's necessary to, you know, make some adjustments that worked sometimes before and see if they work. Um, and I've had fairly good success um, with closing the apps at least once a day. I don't know why it works. I, I can't even begin to tell you, but it works. So that's for whatever that's worth. Um, it seems to solve a lot of problems. This is Chanel with a comment and question kind of on the same topic. Well, it is on the same topic. Okay. All right. Go ahead then, Chanel. <laughs> okay. So I guess, um, so one way that I like to close apps, and I love that uh, one finger swipe up and double tap, but if my voiceover is just being really unresponsive and I know I'm in the app switcher and every, I'll just start a three finger flick up and that closes the current app and focus. And then it moves to the next app and you can keep closing them that way. Um, so that's one thing. And then I'm just wondering, because sometimes I notice in the contact field, you're typing and you don't, your finger, when you go to select something, it doesn't always land on the right thing, but then you kind of have to swipe and explore by touch a little bit to find the contact. Is that the issue or is the issue that it's just not showing up at all? Yeah. Um, uh, Vincent, do you have any comment on that? Was the exploring by touch um, showing you the result that you were, or have you tried exploring by touch? Uh, when I, when I, uh, what, what has happened to me uh, many times is that when I land, let's say I'm, I'm touching the, 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 the keyboard and it tells me, for example, uh, letter, uh, letter K, uh, and then I try to continue sweeping, you know, to the, to the right because I wanted the L, I didn't want the K. And then it doesn't switch. It gives me options in K, you know, like no or knowledge or you know whatever uh, words that start with K. And uh, so I have to remove my finger and delete what it just wrote. Uh, and that happens fairly frequently. So I, I don't know if it's my finger. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because that pred those predictions those should show up kind of like at the top of the keyboard, I would think, and not well, to the right. Yeah. Well, but it, it, it's uh, it, it's reading them uh, as I try to 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 move, you know, from K to to the left or to the right or to whatever. <gasps> oh, it, okay. It, I, I, it yeah. doesn't tell me. It doesn't give me the the next letter. It tells me the options uh, uh, that I have with that particular key that I touched before. Yes, I. I think I know what you're talking. I think maybe you have a feature called slide to type turned on, which tries to guess what you are typing based on the pattern of movement of your finger. That's what that is maybe sounding like to me. So you might want to go into, oh my gosh, uh, if someone wants to tell, I know you can set it in your rotor to turn it quickly on and off. Um, I think it's, I, I, I think it's in the voiceover settings, but I'd have to check. Or I don't know if anyone knows off the top of um, their heads where the where you turn off the slide to type. But that's what it's sounding like to me. So if maybe have, this is Jerry again from. Vermont. Okay, go ahead, Jerry. 
Yep, uh, if you don't have it in your rotor, um, I, 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 um, it needs to be put in your rotor and then you can use your rotor to turn it on or off. Um, I have always turned that predictive thing off in no matter what I'm doing because <coughs> it drives me nuts. And what I would suggest is turning all that predictive stuff off uh, and, and going to um, the, the, the touch typing, uh, not the direct touch typing, but the touch typing where you just find your letter and lift your finger and boom, it's there. You don't have to double tap at all. That, that's just my suggestion. It's a personal preference, obviously, but um, yeah, you go to your rotor and voiceover settings. You have to um, go in accessibility, tap voiceover, turn, it says voiceover on, you tap it and you, you flick down till you find rotor, double tap that, and then you check what things you want in your rotor. And that way you will, you will put, uh, say slide the type or, or form fields or whatever you want in the rotor. And then you just uh, get out of that. And then when you're in a document, if you want slide the type and that works for you, that's fabulous. But you can also turn it off. And uh, if you put typing in your rotor, you can change it to uh, uh, touch typing. So, um, you know, where you just pick your, you, you find the letter, pick your finger up and bing, it's, it's there. You know, this that's is my- Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Sure. Um, who did I think I did hear you first, Chanel? Yeah, so I just went to keyboard and found predictive there as well. If you go to settings, yes. general, and then keyboard, and it's under the all keyboard section. I thought maybe there. I was just curious if it was in another place because what Jerry says definitely works. But I was just curious, so <laughs> yeah, I went to look. <laughs> yeah, very good. So. And I yes, and I also am in keyboard quickly now as well, and I do see the slide to type as well. Um, so that's a global. If you just know you never want to use it, you can turn that off in keyboard. Keyboard. So settings and then keyboard. And yes, under all keyboard, you do have the uh, predictive text. You can turn just called predictive. You can turn that on and off as you can with the slide to type. Thank this you. is Greg. All right, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, Vincent, another, another possibility is if you hold your finger on a letter too long, then it'll tell you alternate characters. Um, so you may just need to move your finger faster off of off of letters. Yes, right. Thank you. Uh, mm. I appreciate that. But I I, I think that oh, I I hate predictive. Uh, it's made my life miserable. So I think I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, turn that off. Yeah, that's why it's a setting. Some people like it. Some people don't. For sure. Like I know for me, slide to type. I always I completely turn that off. I'm not a fan, but other people like it. So, um, so yeah. Hopefully that will at least help you to have to do like less, you know, deleting. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Very good. Good discussion. All right. Who would like to ask the next question? Feel free to uh, remember you do have to unmute before you Jody. ask and then, yep, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I agree with all of that. I go into keyboard and I turn all the automatic stuff off because it's a pain. But the thing I was gonna comment about is that you can now go to uh, settings and go to Safari and you can turn on the reader to be there all the time instead of, you know, some websites would offer the reader and you'd have to turn it on in each website. But if you go to Safari now, you can turn it on for everything. Uh-huh. Okay. Very good. And then how would you turn it if you wanted it off for when you visited the site, you would just go into the uh, page settings and turn it off there? Yes. Yes, I think so. Well, the nice thing about the reader is that it, it follows, voiceover follows it a lot better. In other words, it skips a lot of things and yeah. takes you smoothly through the website instead of jumping yeah. around the way it would without the reader on. No, that's true. But I, I, it's, it's so dependent. Like I've had sometimes websites where I know for a fact, it's like not showing certain text. So then I have to turn yeah, it off. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You're right. You just go to pages and, and turn it on, turn yeah. it on or turn it off there. Okay. All right. Very good. But it's nice to have that default. 
yeah, it's good to have that. All. Yeah. These little, um, what is that term? Like Easter eggs, like these little like hidden things that don't get yeah. into documentation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you for that. All right. Who would like to um, ask the next question or make the next comment? <clears throat> I had a question for Jody, actually, Maria, this is Jerry again. Uh, all right, go ahead, Jerry. I'm hogging tonight a little bit, but anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, um, I wondered, Jody, if when you're in reader, does it prevent you from hitting the links properly and, you know, or, or does it limit you in Safari in any other way? I haven't experienced it. I like it because, you know, it, it seems to work more smoothly with voiceover. Mm hmm mm hmm and I forget why. I had to turn it off, and I'm not quite sure why I did. Uh, but it, it's, uh, I know I have, um, you know, the, the read offline things on for a lot of stuff, you know, and that, that seems to work. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We're neighbors. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right near the Vermont border too. Are you in Andover, uh, around there? Uh, no, I'm. I'm down south in Swansea, which is uh, near. Okay. Keene. Yep. Okay. So right. Very close to Brattleboro. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Good. Uh, all right. Very good. Good uh, comments there. Who would like to um, ask a new topic? Anyone who hasn't asked a question tonight, perhaps. This Roy. Go ahead, Roy. Uh, earlier when Dee was asking about incoming phone calls, I was doing something else and couldn't respond. But if you go to settings to your phone settings, there's a place where incoming calls can be banner or full screen. If she changes that to full screen, it may be more to her liking. All right. But that's all I had. All right. Very good. Well, thank you for that. Yes, that is. So just to clarify, if someone doesn't, so the um, a banner is just a notification that appears at the top of the window, at the top of the screen, and you have to find it, uh, you know, by using explore by touch and then interact. And it can sometimes be harder to actually find it. Um, whereas the, ba um, the full screen like actually takes up the entire screen and it's an alert and you like can't do anything until you, you know, make it go away or unless it goes away on its own, you know, you know in the case of a phone call, but you don't have to like hunt around so much to find it before you can begin using it because it's uh, right there so it's um in, in prior versions of ios that was the only option and then more recently apple started to default to the banner but um as uh as uh, roy just said you can change that back so all right very good um this is <laughs> helene go ahead helene i uh, have a question about a, an app that will uh, Uber Eats, which I never order, but when I was in Arizona, I did use it once, but um, at least a few times a day, it'll just come on as a notification of offering me a deal. And um, what I take into doing is I hear the word clear, so I just keep double tapping when it says that, but it still is happening and I don't want to remove the app because then I'd have to put it back on when I'm in Arizona again after Thanksgiving. So I never order it in Woodstock because Uber Eats is not delivering food here. Um, is there a way to make this go away? Can Is there a person you can call and say stop? This is Brett. So you want to stop the notifications, at least for now. Is that... Yes. All right. Uh, go ahead, Brad. Yeah, just uh, in your iPhone settings, go into notifications, go down the list to Uber Eats, open it up and turn off notifications and you won't be bothered until you turn them back on. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Very good. 
Um, and also now, uh, just an FYI, this might not apply to you, but uh, there is this feature. Sometimes um, there are notifications. You kind of you don't want them intruding, but if you not necessarily for Uber Eats, but in general, if you you know just want need to see, like have them there for your reference. And there is this feature called notification summary now in iOS. And if um, for anyone, if you do use that, it basically consolidates your notifications quietly and delivers them at certain times of day um you can also choose it's not just between show them and don't show the, allow them and don't it's allow them or allow them in the scheduled summary or don't allow them so <laughs> if you are using the summary this um, is herbie or flex is, is flexibility yes go ahead herbie <clears throat> just something to keep in mind though if you're gonna do uber eats as a summary notification if you do use it to order anything you're not gonna get those notifications yeah that um you tell you that your food's on the way and all that so that's just yeah. i don't think there's a way to specifically block those ad notifications i think it affects you know all of them or none basically so yeah a very um, good point that's something to keep in mind yes indeed yeah very good either way Helene, it sounds like you're gonna have to change the setting in some way for when you're in woodstock and then adjust it back to receive them again when you're in arizona yeah but at least you won't be you know bothered by them in woodstock so. Un until woodstock perhaps comes up with uber e <laughs> <laughs> this is jerry from vermont again from vermont yes go yeah, ahead i had a, I had a question about the summary thing because i i have two of them at least that may be three of them scheduled the day and uh -huh. what i've found is I, i'll i have them in my lock screen of course that's where they show up if you want them to i guess i don't know yeah or they, in your notification center yeah. yeah yeah so um i have them on my lock screen but when i tap on a notification that's in there uh -huh. i get this thing that says button 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 it none of the things seem to be labeled has anyone oh, yes. uh, got a, a, a thing with that yeah i mean i i can't i do use it for uh you know if i if i see something in there that i want um i i just go into notifications i guess but i when i tap on it to activate whatever it is whether it's the i have uh, chimes on my um my iphone whether there's chimes or a message or a uh, notification from uh, Apple News or whatever. It it just goes button, button, button. I, I don't know why. Maybe I'm not mm -hmm. flicking or doing something. Anybody got any suggestions? All right. Anyone have any suggestions on that? I, I know that I used to experience that in an older version of iOS, but now if you're running um, the 15.4.1, I forget when it was fixed. I don't think it's with, I think it's earlier than 15.4.1, but I am able to access it now without an issue. Like it does, like it'll say the app with a head. So like once I expand it, it'll give me the um, each app as a heading and then it'll say more if I want to see more of the notifications. And if I keep flicking, it'll just show me like the first few from that app. But like, I know exactly what you're talking about. That used to happen with me, the un just completely unlabeled buttons. And it was like unusable, but that did get fixed, um, at least for me in Brad. Uh, recently. Uh, go ahead, Brad. I, I, this is just a, an, a, a, I don't know, an idea. See if screen recognition could be inadvertently Ooh, turned yeah. on and turn it off. Because sometimes that can cause havoc if it's, you know, not needed. Yes. That's a really good point. This is Herbie. Yeah, Go thanks. ahead, Herbie. So, yeah, the other thing you can try after the screen recognition is the way that we used to have to fix the issue. And that was with the... Um, oh, now, now I'm drawing a blank. I had it a minute ago. It was in the visual settings, I think with the um oh hold I on i need to go look it up because i'm actually drawing a blank. yeah yeah i know i'm like i know I, I feel like it's on the tip of my i i kind of know what you're referring to but i couldn't tell you for the life of me what it is <laughs> well stay tuned we might get an answer in real time on this call oh um oh i think it was the reduced motion aha uh -huh. all right turning that uh on uh, turning that wait, off, wait. turning that off, because a lot off, of times, off, off, yes, because yeah. 
because we used to have to turn it on because of the fact that uh, voiceover would skip over some stuff. And so, you know, a lot of us had it turned on for that reason. So that was, if I recall, what fixed the uh, bug with the uh, buttons is turning off the reduced motion. So I think that's what I'm looking for. All right. It's wild how these things Thanks, are connected. Well, good luck, Jerry. Hopefully you can figure something out because yes, in theory, it should work. <laughs> All right. Very good. Who would like to ask the next question? We have five minutes before the halftime show. So we four minutes now. So we can put, uh, we can get another question in. This is Dang Joe with comment. Ooh. Oh, sorry. All right. I think I heard Joe first. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a, um, a news article and I got it off the computer. So just text on a piece of paper. I used seeing AI to read it to me and it would read through the phone just fine. I have a Bluetooth speaker because I wanted to come up much louder, um, but it wouldn't play the, the, the seeing AI uh, text. It would play whenever I would speak through it or I could play like Pandora music through it, but it wouldn't play the text part. Uh-huh. So it wouldn't play uh, seeing AI. It wouldn't content. play seeing AI. Exactly. I, with, okay. without, the, without the Bluetooth speaker, it would through my uh, earbuds or just to the phone speaker. Hmm. But, it, but Bluetooth wouldn't pick it up. This is Roy. Oh, right. Go ahead, Roy. Sometimes if you turn voiceover off and then back on, it'll flip over to Bluetooth after you do that. Turn voiceover off and turn back. Boy, that sure is a simple way. Very good. I'll try that. <laughs> well, hopefully that'll work. Okay. All right. Very good. We're, we're finding out that things you would never imagine had connections. They are somehow connected to each other. That's the theme. All right. This is Joe. Thank, go, thank go you, ahead, Joe. Roy. Thank you, Roy. All right. Well, good luck with that. Hopefully that would uh, fix your issue. All right. Who would like to ask the next question? Dana. Uh, sorry? Dana Who? with a comment. Oh, okay. Dana. Yes, go ahead. Well, the problem I had er earlier about the cat lock is fixed ah. now. I had the idea to go to um, keyboards under general and uh, the caps, I turned the caps lock on and it was turned off. So it's fixed now. <laughs> I feel like a real idiot. Uh oh, uh, Maria. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> sorry. I was saying no worries. I was saying, you know, there are like so, with so many settings and we play around in there and we, uh, we turn it off, you know, by accident. So now we know that that's there for, uh, for someone else to, um, to, to learn from. So very good. All right. Anyone else? We could get another Cody question. With a quick question. Gail. Uh, ooh. All right. I think, uh, go ahead, Joey... Gail. Go ahead, Gail. Oh, okay. I'll ask you after. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Gail. Okay. I was listening to a podcast and um the other day and this has happened more than once um when i was um i'd be i think i was like almost uh, halfway through and then a phone call would come through and then the podcast would stop and then i would have to start the podcast all the way over again and i would try to um i couldn't find the controls or anything to fast forward it, um, but um, I noticed whenever I would play like a podcast, it would, you know, whenever a phone call would come in, it was it would just stop the podcast, and it would I have to start from the beginning. That's oh, I question. see. Like it wouldn't keep your play. Okay, and which app would is not this keep that you're my using? Place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and which app are you using to play the podcast? Um, I um I thought it was Apple Podcast, but maybe okay. not. Yeah. Oh, well, that is the one that's built in. So unless no, it was probably probably Apple Podcast. All right, all right. Um, anyone have an experience with, with this? Uh, Apple Podcast is not personally my podcast player of choice, so I have like no. Ex I, I use it to browse, but I have like never played anything in it. So. 
<laughs> um, anyone have any experience with this? I find that we, I understand it's stopping because of the phone call, but then you'd think that it would keep your place. So. All right. Well, it sounds like this might be something to do a little homework on and research on and, and see if okay. um, we well, can this is- like replicate. Oh, who is that? Yeah, this is. This is Gail. Did anyone else has anyone else ever had this problem with podcast, or is yeah. this was it? Uh, this is this is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. Yes, I do. I have the exact same problem, and I have listened three or four times beginning. To- oh my and- god! May ooh, may I suggest yeah. that you all consider switching podcast apps? Then, my goodness, if if it's, I mean, this app is just like I, I, there actually our uh, recent uh, cafe uh, talked, which you can find on our website, uh, talked about a few different podcast apps. Um, there's like Overcast and Downcast, and there's some other one. There's Pocket Cast, the one that I use, which is free, and that, but it, well, it's free, but there, if you pay like twenty bucks a year, it has some really nice features. Um, it's called Castro. So, um, my goodness, if this app can keep your place when a phone call, I would suggest. We, and you can, I, I would hope, my goodness, uh, I would hope there's a way in the native podcast app to like export your feeds so that you can import them into a podcast, you know, a third party, another podcast app. But I, I would not know without, uh, without checking mm-hmm. it out. Um, this is Jody. Anyone... Oh, go ahead, Jody. Have you tried just doing a two finger double tap to see if you'll start again? I try. This is Gail. Yep, I, ahead, I Gail. tried. Yeah, I, I tried that and, um, it does it um, you know, sometimes, but not when I'm on a call, you know. Um, I mean, it works no, on I mean, iBug. Uh, iBug works. I will say, that, you know, that iBug has always worked, but some of the other um, podcasts, a couple of the other ones, is where I've had the problem. Huh. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Right. All right. Well, I guess my best suggestion is uh, to play with some other podcast apps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Gail, I'll try that. I guess I'll, I may um, have to do that. <laughs> All right. You and Helene both, it sounds yes. like, because you should not have to listen to it from the beginning. My goodness. All right. Very good. Well, on that note, it is time for your facilitating experience to improve as I, for the better, as I uh, turn it over to Sandhya. <laughs> <laughs> don't think so all right thank you maria my goodness okay so now we are going to give anybody who didn't get to say hi the first time please say your name and where you're from well, nikki just came in San all right Francisco. welcome nikki hi hi marty philadelphia marty welcome roy, kathy from Tulsa. roy kathy <laughs> Well, Priscilla from Arlington. Hey, Miss Priscilla. Yes, go ahead. Brooks in Oklahoma. Brooks, welcome. Chanel in Houston. Chanel. Joe Vincent in Norman, Bruce. Oklahoma. Sorry. Joe, welcome. And Vincent, welcome. Linda in Debbie Galveston. Debbie Devers, Louisville, Kentucky. Linda in Galveston. <laughs> okay. David in Houston. Hey, David. Welcome. I think I heard somebody else. Okay. Anybody else? Debbie Detheridge, Louisville, Kentucky. Hey, Debbie, long time. Okay. I know. <laughs> Glad you're back. All right. Marvin hey, from Chicago. Hey, Marvin, welcome back. Glad to have you. Greg Anybody in else? Texas. Greg, welcome. Anybody else? Street from Virginia. Street, welcome. Anybody else want to say hi? Okay. All right, so here we go. So now I know we're going to be going to talk about the clues for iBug Night at the Virtual Movies, which will be this Friday, this Friday at 8 p.m. on the same Zoom conference line, 7.30 for the social time, and then the discussion and trivia to follow. So, So with those perplexing, sometimes agonizing clues, we have, I don't even want to know, well, I can't speculate as to who will be appearing, but I think it's the iBug guy. iBug guy, are you there? Uh, the silence is frightening. Just 
music. Maybe he's still sleeping. <laughs> New music. Michael, song. where are you? Uh, okay. Yes, 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 I'm here. I'm not sure what happened to my intro music, but yeah, you need a new assistant, maybe. All right. Okay. Somebody fouled up there. Okay. Yes, we are here to do the clues for the big reveal this week. Uh oh, I'm running out of juice. I better plug this sucker in. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> all right. We're back in business. I oh hate to drop out right in the middle of the clues. Oh, my goodness. That would be so terrible. Really. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. This What are we doing? Oh, the big reveal for this Friday's movie, which yes. is... Don't tell them the name of the movie. Oh, that's what we're getting ready to do the clues for. Right. All right. It is now time for... Michael... All right, so the rules are very simple. Can anybody hear me? Is this yes, thing on? we can hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'm clear. Okay, the rules are very simple. Just like on the regular program, you want to say your name, wait to be acknowledged by myself. No, not myself, by me. And then you can guess. There is one guess per clue. And this time there are five total guesses. So that gives you one guess per clue. If we have five clues, we may not have five clues. Okay, so with that, uh, what else? Do we have any other rules? No other rules. I think, I think that's it. All right, faithful assistant, where are you? Can't count on you to do anything here. All right, we are ready for our clues. Well. Yeah, well. Oh. Any day now. <laughs> It could be a song, you know. Okay, clue number one. Our movie this week takes place again. We're back in the South during the 1980s. Okay, that's the clue. The movie this week takes place in the South during the 1980s. Kathy. Ms. Kathy. Uh, Steel Magnolias. Oh, that's a great movie. So close, Kathy. Ding, 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 ding. She got it on the first clue. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 <laughs> Kathy. Wow. <laughs> oh, my that God. is amazing. Oh, wow. What gave it away? What it's gave a, it away? It wasn't even a very great well, clue either. <laughs> I guess it, it was when a I great... thought of the 80s in the South, that was just. All right. Well, oh, fried green tomatoes. You saved oh, yeah. the oh. rest of the group from having to go through the heartbreak <laughs> of the final clue. Okay. I kind of feel bad though. It's sort of anticlimactic. I mean, I wanted to win it all, but <laughs> speaking of winning, right. <laughs> Johnny, what do we have for our winner tonight? Miss Kathy, what will she get to take home with her? Oh my goodness. This is an exciting prize, Kathy. <laughs> so the first prize that you will have, you have two prizes this time. Well, yes, two. Okay. 
technically two. Okay, so the first prize is a red velvet cake in the shape of an armadillo. And in Texas, we call them armadillos. All right, so if you want to know why you're getting that, you will definitely have to come and watch the movie so you can enjoy a red velvet cake in the shape of an armadillo. And then the other prize, it's probably a first for us, it is six magnolia trees. And in case you were wondering what kind of magnolia trees, it is a big leaf magnolia. The Latin is magnolia macrophilia. No, macrophila, sorry. <laughs> Oh, Macrophilia. <laughs> the bleeding. The bleeding <laughs> Sorry. magnolias. So that, still magnolia trees. Still, so that could so these leaves can be up to 32 inches long. That's almost three feet, oh in case God. you were wondering. Ooh. And like most magnolias, it is deciduous. It is a deciduous tree, though it can somewhat be over evergreen in warmer zones. The blooms, um, which normally appear in May, so you'll get to enjoy them because we're just starting May. How perfect is that? Oh, wow. Are 10 inches across, 10 inches Ooh. across with white, and then they have a purple petal base. Okay, purple petal Ooh, nice. base. Wow, so that is your prize. I think we've got all our iBook colors in there somewhere. So there you go. I hope you have room for these plants. They can, I mean, not plants, these are trees. They're going to uh, grow from up to 60 to 80 feet. So better clear some room in Ooh. the yard and they can last okay. for a hundred years. So oh the gift that keeps on going. All right, well, thank you so much, Kathy, for playing. And Mr. McCulloch, great clues. And uh, would you like to say goodnight? <laughs> what do you mean great clues? We didn't get to hear any of the clues. That's why they were great. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was wondering, since since <laughs> Kathy guessed it on the first try, can we hear the rest of the clues? I can't believe this. People want to hear those clues? All right, real quickly, we'll run oh through the rest God. of the clues. Thank oh you, Dana. You will get to tell the joke. <laughs> And I will laugh at your joke this Friday. Oh my All right. God. Clue oh number God. two. The film contains <sighs> essentially a series of one comic one-liners. Clue number three. The main characters have the intestinal fortitude to survive any challenge. Intestinal? Intestinal fortitude. <laughs> what is that? Clue number four. <laughs> They are a tightly knit group of friends who love, help, fight, cry, make up, and hug one another. And finally, the clue number five that would give it away, the big scene in the movie is a brief, heartfelt monologue that this will Dana. move you to <laughs> tears. <laughs> What was a tearjerker? Dana, uh -oh. Dana, Dana. Oh, is this did. steel magnolias? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, good Dana. guess. Way to go, Dana. <laughs> All right. This is, this is Nikki. Right. Um, can I say something? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I think when you talk about the intestinal fortitude, I think they meant they had the guts to do whatever it was they had yeah, to do. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. I was thinking of sausage. Strong, they said were that. strong. No, <laughs> Okay. I gotta go. But my Thank assistant, my assistant figured out my sound problem, so I will oh, leave no. you. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> the movie. I know it was oh, no. Dolly Parton. And... Where's the song? Hi, Fred. Hang on. Hey. Hi. <laughs> I hear no sound. He's having audio problems, obviously. Uh, okay. It's We're not on. going to work. Somebody. Yeah, I could have told you that. Okay, could you say goodnight, music? Mr. McCulloch? Okay. <sighs> say goodnight. Okay. Goodnight, Mr. McCulloch. Okay, thank God. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, all right. Okay, thank you everybody for playing Michael's movie, Minutia. And now we are once again 
in our regularly scheduled program and re order has been restored. You are all thankfully oh, muted. It's the best it. part of the call. All right, <laughs> Maria, are you there? All right, indeed oh. I am. Oh, well, we have to tell them. So Maria is going to do our iBug Bite segment. It'll be a brief segment about a technique or a gesture or something. We're going to find out what it is. And then right after that, you can ask her questions Which and then we'll resume with our regular clean. call. Mr. McCulloch, oh, you're, Mr. McCulloch. you're okay. still I'm here. I'm you're still, still here. Still Bye. Ahead. Okay. Here All we right. Go. Well, we are going to talk about books. We're going to talk about how to get a book using the books app. And, um, more specifically, I'm going to show you how to download the uh, app. Well, yeah, any Apple. I'm going to show it with the iPhone. Um, the user guide for the same. So you can have it on your phone um, as a local reference if you need to look anything up. Because uh, believe it or not, that manual does contain um, a good amount of uh, stuff. And you can do text searches and such in it. So um, it is not a bad thing to have on your device. So we are now, oh, my speech. Speech oh, on. There we go. It was being temperamental. <laughs> All right. So we are in the books app here. And reading now. Heading. You land here on this reading now tab. And um, I'm just going to quickly, I will say um, from like a Braille standpoint, I usually read books in, in the Kindle app. But of course, with these user guides, these are in iBooks, I mean, in books, excuse me, uh, format. So I do have them loaded here. But I will say I find it a very clean uh, experience to browse for books using this app, like with the title and author they're on one line it's pretty efficient and there's a little less clutter than like on a um web page like the amazon web page to, to browse um new content via kindle so i do like this app for browsing and so let me just show you quickly um what browsing looks like and all the information that you can get in this app by a rotoring through headings and then flicking to the right to get the information in that heading now i will say um from the top of the screen, even when we get to the store tabs, uh, don't just rotor to the heading and go down to the first heading because you will miss uh, some of the featured items that are there before the uh, first heading. So there really is a lot of stuff to check out here. So like in this reading now tab, reading now, heading. if I skipped, if I went to the first heading, I would skip some things. Let me show you. So if I flick to the right account there's my account so similar to the layout say of the um you know app store where you're able to view your account and there's where you can um easily download if there are any updates for example to books that have been released or you can view your purchase history and the like today's reading five minutes left button. this is a button about reading goals this is a feature of the books app current and recent current Heading. And see, now we get this to these Sonia. headings. Maria, could you pick it a little louder, please? Okay. Oh, okay. my goodness. Or closer um, to your button. There you go. Good, good, good. Perfect. Oh, okay, perfect. Heading. Thank you. Yes. Let me know if, if that happens again. Um, so now, uh, so what I was saying was if I had just gone to this heading of current and recent, I would have skipped those account and reading goals. Those might not be the biggest things, but you'll see in the store, um, you, you do skip some stuff if you just go to the heading. So from here on out, things will be under the heading. So let me just show you if I wrote her to heading headings and just flick down. So we have the, the current and recent current heading. This is what I'm currently reading. Recent heading. Recent. Want to read. Heading. Things that I have, night sky. things, and, and it's doing image recognition. So things that I want to read. This is in a books page. You can, uh, there's a want to read toggle. And if you, uh, this is on a book information page. And if you activate that, if you turn that on, then it would appear in this list. Books you'd like to read next. Heading for you. Heading for you based on things you've read. What books, things you might like. Books. Heading. Audiobooks, heading, and it, night sky. And it um, breaks up also here sections of suggestions um, into books and audiobooks uh, because, yes, you can also use, um, they. I believe they source them from Audible. So, yes, they do sell uh, books uh, as well. Current bestsellers. Heading. And again, here's some, some browsing features. So you can browse bestsellers in different genres. See what's popular right now. Heading, reading goals. 
Heading. Books read this year. Heading. Heading non. So as you can see, this is very much about what you're now reading, what goal, what you have read, what you might want to read, etc. If we move just to briefly show you the other tabs. Library. Tab. That tab, five. that tab will list all the books in your library. Bookstore, tab three of five. The bookstore will actually show you the, these are the electronic books, the non-audio books. Although we'll see, it is integrated. Audio books, tab four of five. Uh, audio books again, like a featured storefront for those. Search. Tab and search, five and five. which is what we're going to look at. But let me just show you to give you a sense of one of these stores. So I'm going to go to the bookstore. The audio books uh, store section is very similar. Uh, bookstore. Selected. Bookstore. Tab. Three. Bookstore. Heading. So heading. Again, if I were to just flick down to the next heading, I would miss some things. So just to show you, if I flick to the right. Browse sections. Button. Heading. This allows you to pick all the different sections to uh, browse through in the store. They have like for you, again, things you might like, uh, things that are new and trending, books they love, uh, the editors, meaning uh, the Apple books, editors, uh, bestsellers in different genres and so on. You can pick a section from here. Featured collection, celebrating best-selling series, the win bestsellers, enjoy the new, an epic feud, limited time price. Listen to featured collection. Check out the limited time. So you authors. see here. Find an author spotlight. Lauren featured collection. New in series. Donate for you. So you see all that stuff we got, all that stuff we got to before you, those were all buttons. I didn't let them continue for the sake of time, but you could have clicked, you could have double tapped on each of them and that would have brought up a page for browsing. And so now again, under each of these headings, we have things. So for you, things that might think, things that I might like, if we now we'll just move by heading. Recommendations based on books you've purchased or shown interest in. <laughs> Heading. That's a description of for you. And then if I flick to the right, it would show me titles. And again, they're all buttons. It would show the title and the author. And I can uh, double tap and view the book's info page. New and trending. Heading. Recently released and notable books. Heading. And so that's a description of that. So those two headings are right next to each other. And then you'll start having uh, seeing books if you flick to the right. And eventually you'll see a button that says see all. And then you double tap that and it takes you into that section. And again, each of those sections, again, you they yes, they have headings, but you don't want to just go to the heading because there are a few things if you just flick to the right initially above that heading that you can use to browse. Like in the new and trending, there's a collection for what's new in the current month and other things top charts heading paid heading free heading new york times fiction new york times nonfiction. Heading. those are all different charts that again you can see all of them um whichever one you you select more to explore heading coming soon heading pre-order books now to get them the day they come out that's a, heading. a, de a description for coming soon books we love heading special offers and free Heading, find good reads at great prices. Heading, read more. Ellipsis. Heading, recent bestsellers by genre. Heading, fiction. Young adult, nonfiction, sci-fi and mysteries and romance. Top rated. To see what's getting all the genres. Heading not. Fun. So you see, there's just a whole bunch of stuff here. This is like, if you like to discover new books, um, this is a really great app to browse for books and um, find some things you might like, even if you don't end up reading it in, in books, if you end up in, you know, like from Bookshare and Voice Stream Reader or Kindle or whatever, but this is um, books I find is a really efficient way to browse for books. So now we're gonna do a search. Tab bar, search, selected, search, tab. And I'm going five to- Five, search, heading. If, if I move to the top here of the screen, I'm going books to- and audio books, Sur insertion, search field is editing. And I'm just- I'm just going to quickly type in user guide and using my braille display and uh, and then do a user search guide. search field. OK, so you can see now user guide is in my search field. So I'm looking to find. So I'm just going to flick to the right here. Cancel button. All button. This is here. You can uh, filter which results you see all books, books or audio books. We're just going to leave it alone for now. 
and I'm looking for the iPhone user guide. In your, li- see up in your library. Ah, Heading. so see, I actually, normally you wouldn't get this if you didn't have anything in, in your library, but since I have some old versions of the iPhone user guide in my library, it's going to show them to me. And unfortunately, Apple doesn't say like user guide for iOS 15 or whatever in the title. So um, it's kind of annoying when you're looking back at it, but you will see that I do not have the latest version. Edits. Store results. Heading. So we're going to go to the store results heading. iPhone user guide. Apple and there it is. 3.7 stars. Get button. See how efficient that was? This is, this is why I like this. Like it told me the title, the author, the rating and that I could get it. And it was just all on one line. And see if I just, if I move to the right again. Apple watch user guide. Flicked to the right. See, there's right away the next result. There's not a lot of flick, flicking I have to do. I now, if I wanted to get this, there are multiple ways. I can open the book information page um, and I will let uh, you explore that if you'd like. But it said actions are available, right? So I can just swipe down. Get. And there's get. This is free. If it was a paid thing, of course, it would say buy and you'd see uh, uh, the price on the line. But if I double tap here on get, Double click to get sleep. On- ah, doesn't this sound the sounds like what you get for installing an app? So I'm going to face ID account Maria. Do- so so I, I, found- I moved the uh, phone away from me so I could use face ID. This works exactly like when you're purchasing an app. And so I, I double clicked when my face was in view and then it gave the ding. And so now Results. iPhone user guide Apple incorporated. 3.7 stars downloading button. So see, it gives me the, Actions available. it gives me the iPhone user guide. Apple okay. And now that's stopped because it's letting me know now that I can read it. So the downloading changed to read. And so get activate. You'll see here, um, it still says get there, but in order to actually read it, for example, I could just double tap and open it, um, you know, from here to read it. And iPhone close button. And here is the reading page. So I will let you explore um, that and how it actually looks to read and navigate a book. But I wanted to just um, take this bite to give you um, a brief overview of how you would go about getting a book using the books app. So with that, if anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute and ask them. This is Dan with a question. All right, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I haven't used books in quite a while, so apparently it's been it's been updated quite a bit. I guess. Uh, yes. Um, but what about setting up the account? Can you tell me about uh, what's involved in doing that? So it's just the same account, like using your Apple ID. So it's using the same, like, uh, you know, that you have the same account with your app store or if you have any like Apple music subscription or uh, any iTunes store content or anything like that. So it's just that same account when you're setting up your iPhone. Okay. So, so, um, so yeah, I I already have that course. So, so that means that once I get into the account set up, uh, other than putting in the ID, do I have to create a password? No, no, because it's the same account. You shouldn't even have to put in your ID because when you set up your iPhone, that has been set up like for all Apple services, like similar to when you went in. in, Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Like you're saying when you purchase a book, like, are you going to have to enter your password? Like if it's a paid book? Yes, I would imagine that that you would have to create an account first. Well, you don't have to create because you've already created an account. It's your Apple ID. So it's the same account that you're using with other aspects of your phone. Oh, I see. Okay. So yeah. Since you've done it in the store. Exactly. Oh, okay. That's yeah, yeah. Great. So it's, yeah. Um, this is Marty. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Marty. Um, is this books on our phone or do we have to yes. download it? Yep. No, this is the books that's baked right into your phone. Is it like on set? Like, is it in settings or is it on? Is it like on, on the... No, it should just be on your home screen. And if it's not there, okay. take a look at your library. And, it should definitely be and, there. And reading with books, is it as easy as um, voice stream or or can you can you actually take the book 
and copy it the voice stream if you wish. So you can't um gender because like the books that you purchase from books, they are protected. So you can't mm -hmm. um read them in right. voice stream. But yeah, in terms of like reading them, I mean, yeah, similar to voice stream, like the um uh you're gonna have the con it's not just it's not gonna open like in full screen like in um the Kindle. You're gonna have the uh what what is the word I'm looking for? Controls. You're gonna have things like you have library in the upper left corner, then you have table of contents, appearance, and search, okay. and then bookmark, and then you get to the page text, and then you have a page chooser at the bottom. And of course, you can do scrolling and such as well. So when you're in the text, then yeah, you can just um have speech, read it, or you can read it with braille. Um, there will be a little pause when it switches pages, but it should like with a say all, you know, uh continue moving, you know, uh turning pages and it's going to read using voiceover um so you're not using right. like a separate voice you know reading aloud like you have in voice stream reader it's voiceover that's and doing the, the reading can you copy the free ones or or you can't copy those no. either I no no I no, no you no you can't because you and you don't even have like a caught like you don't even have a share sheet option so. oh okay Thanks. yeah Yep. This is Jerry from Vermont. Yep, go ahead, they Jerry. still have the ability, it used to have the ability to continuously scroll pages. Uh, I don't know whether it still does. Or do you right, have right. To yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I would have to. Right. I know, because that like it did break. <laughs> um, yeah. It did break a bit uh, earlier. So I would mm -hmm. actually have to um, play with it again to see if it because I what I've tended when I've looked at stuff, especially like with this manual, like I said, I have looked mm -hmm. up stuff, but it's like I'm looking at things and I find what I want. Um, yeah, so yeah. I yeah. So I would actually have to um, uh, look at I, I'm going to have to try that and like let you know if it I'm I can mute in a second once we go back to this and I can just do a say all and see if it does um if it does uh scroll yeah thanks I <laughs> um I have a, I, I've I've read a lot of books in books in the past yeah as well as uh as as book share and voice stream sure. reader and yeah. you know I I like books uh, a lot of people that that I talk to in my chat aren't so happy with it but it, mm -hmm. you, you've got to fool with the interface to get it just the way you want it, I think. But once you do it, I have no problem. I I got a watch yeah. uh, manual in books too. It was good. Oh, nice. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's useful to have that there because it's like then you just know you have the reference all in one place. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, for me, what stopped me from using it for a long time, um, it actually like used to crash when using a Braille display. Oh, so oh, that was great. kind of yeah. a problem for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yep. So for me, like the Kindle and also the, you know, the Kindle, I found it like because it opened in full screen and it wasn't cluttered. Like I'd bring up a menu with all the other stuff when I wanted it. But again, I, um, I definitely like it's like my preferred way to browse when I'm like looking at what's new and what's you know featured and stuff so um mm -hmm. so yeah I, I will you know go back to kind of checking out the reading myself and then see what that's like but yeah like everyone else you know I do use different sources as well but this is just another tool in the or another another option all right very good this is Jody. all right uh go ahead Jody. I was just going to make a quick comment. Leave it to Apple to bury the manual so that you have to be able to know the phone, know how to use the phone in order to find <laughs> the manual so you can use the phone. This is very true. It's Go true. figure. Indeed. I know they should just like preload it into the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, or, and they should also update it. Like, why do I have to re download it whenever a new oh, um, iOS version comes out? Like, why doesn't the version on my phone, why don't I just up? I mean, I, I don't know, yeah. you know, but. I don't make the rules. I just, you know, go along. <laughs> Kathy. Okay, go ahead, Kathy. Um, this is where they often have sales, right? Like they'll have a books for, well, they have some free books, but like, I think I got Crime and Punishment for $3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you saw the audible yeah. Audible version. It's yeah, like when I was browsing. Audible. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's cheap. Sometimes it'll be cheaper with than it is to go buy something in Audible. You know, yeah, I, I did see. Price. Yeah, I did see something because like when I was going through those headings, it said like great prices, you know, whatever it was. I forget, like build your collection, great prices or something. And it was stuff on sale. And yeah, I remember I came across an audio book and it must have been a sale. It was like three ninety nine in books versus like, you know, even even if I'd use my Audible credit, that would have equated to like nine dollars and something. So like, yeah, I'm going to go yeah. for the three dollars. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, Maria. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, very good. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna see if my say all if it continues to uh, flip the page, and I'll come back and let you all know. But okay, before all then, right. I leave you in Sandia's capable hands. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so now we're done with iBug Bites, and now we're back to uh, question and answer. Anybody who didn't get a chance, we have some new people join us, and. So if you'd like to have us your questions, say your name and then wait to be recognized. We, I know. So who hasn't had a turn yet? Nikki? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I was looking for a number in my iPhone today and it wasn't there and it's my attorney. And then I was looking for another number and that wasn't there either. And these people have been in my phone forever. And now suddenly they're not. Has anybody else had this problem? It's an iPhone 8. All right. I mean, and just to clarify, you don't use voiceover. So this is just a general thing that you're having. You can't find yeah, somebody and, and, in your well, phone. It, they're, they're, just, they're just not there. They've disappeared. And so I'm wondering if anybody else has lost some of their contacts, that they're just not there anymore. Okay. This is Jerry. From, uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. Hang on. Somebody, uh, Jerry, hang on. Uh, who, who else is yeah, the yeah, person? Right. It was Roy. Roy, go ahead, Roy. I don't know if this is it or not, but when you go into your phone to contacts, you have a group option at the top left. In there, it's somehow related to your email addresses. So you want to make sure everything's checked. Does that make sense? Open yeah. up your phone, then make sure contacts is chosen at the bottom. Choose group at the top left and make sure all the emails related to your contacts are turned on or checked. I think. Okay, so. I will try that. Thank you. Good all right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you, Roy. Thanks for the question. Okay, Jerry, you got a follow up on this? Yeah, I was wondering if uh, you know where your contacts are actually being stored. That seems like a stupid question, but um, sometimes if you're, you're working on the contacts that are on your iPhone, and you've got stuff in the cloud that may, if you use iCloud uh, or Google Drives, and I don't know whether Google Drives has a contact storage, but um, they might have disappeared there. So uh, it might be useful to check your iCloud and see if I, uh, uh, contacts are checked uh, up right. there as well. Perfect. You Thanks. know what, that's exactly yeah. what it, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Can I answer that? Yes, go ahead. Okay, that's exactly what it was. I went into groups. And next to iCloud, it was blank. And so I hit that and now both of them are back. So that was the answer. Thank you so, so much. All right, great. Okay, thank you, Nikki. All right, who's next? Somebody new that has a question? Uh, remaining Vincent. Yes. Vincent, go ahead. Uh, I, I, had, I had a similar issue uh, with uh, contacts disappearing, quote unquote, from my uh, directory. And uh, in my case, the reason is that I had to make some changes to my Google Mail, uh, I had to change the passwords, etc. And uh, when I went into the, uh, 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 the the settings there, I activated Mail, but I didn't want to activate Notes, Contacts, and there was some something else in there. Mm -hmm. So I I I, I unchecked the Contacts, and that was the source of my problem. When I went back into uh, uh, that Google Mail account. And then I reactivated contact. They appeared in my uh, in my telephone directory. All right. Okay. There you go. You figured out your own problem. So thank you for pointing that out, Vincent. Okay. Who's next? New question. Arlene. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, I use three clicks on my iPhone to turn voiceover off and on. Okay. And so I've been trying to to do the same thing, set up my iPad the same way and not having any success. So I'm just curious, can you do that on your iPad and I'm just missing something or is that not something I can do on an iPad? Oh, what a great question. Okay, would somebody like to help Miss Arlene about setting up uh, a shortcut on your iPad to turn on and off voiceover? Anybody have any help for Miss Arlene? on your iPad. No iPad users? Brad? Brad, go ahead. It should be the same as on your iPhone. Go into settings, go into 
accessibility uh, should be down towards the bottom of the list where it says accessibility shortcut. Go into there and select voiceover. And if, as long as there's not another one checked, you should just simply be able to either, depending on which, which model of iPad you had, either click the home button three times or click the side button three times, and that should do it. Wonderful. All right, Miss Arlene, I hope that thank helps. You. Okay, thank you. Great question. All right, who else hasn't had a turn? Oh, oh sorry, ahead, I've Maria. had a turn. Sorry, but I wanted to follow up on that uh, scrolling question for iBooks, uh, for books. Uh -huh. I keep doing that, excuse me, in the say all. So uh -huh. it does, and, and good news is it is not crashing with my display, which is good. Um, so it will, if you do a say all, um, it's interesting, it will auto scroll to the next page or if you you're panning with your braille display and you have the setting turn pages um, enabled it will do that but that only seems to be the case until like the end of um, a section or sometimes I've noticed if there are like tables or links or some kind of you know more dynamic content it will sometimes stop it um, in that and then you do have to basically like start it again um, in the next section and then it will again continue to auto uh, scroll as it's like reading continuously until the next you know section or again sometimes like more dynamic content makes it stop but um, overall it should uh, auto scroll. It should read continuously, at least within um, a section at a time. Okay. Thank you, Maria. All right. Very good. Follow up. All right. Okay. Somebody new with a new question that hasn't had a turn. Same. This is D. D, go ahead. I want to know how to stop these Apple nightmares I'm having. <laughs> well, could you just describe your night apple nightmares well last night i opened my iphone case and held my phone under the running faucet till it just got saturated with water oh my goodness i think you need some time away from your iphone i think that might help <laughs> i need something yes yeah. <laughs> after i did it i thought what did i do this for <laughs> Okay, take some time uh, away from your but, phone. But, but it is, yeah, these nightmares are getting bad. All yeah, about Apple bad. crap. All right, thank you, D. Anybody else? New question, new problem. Somebody has not had a turn. Helene. Helene, go ahead. Um, I have um the app picture, picture this, and uh, now that it's spring, and someone said that they didn't know what their tree was, so. I took my phone out and I said this app twenty nine ninety five and I've never been able to use it but because the person could see and of course the same thing happened. Um you just open it and they take a picture and then it tells you what it is. But um is it possible that I don't know how to use it or voiceover is conflicting? It, it will work for the person who is cited, but not for me. Okay, just a little clarification here. So it's called Picture This. And so what is the purpose? You take a picture and then what? You can send and, it to and somebody? Then it tells, no, you, it, you take the picture and then it says, um, this is a um, Asian oriental jewel oh. pink blah 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 plant uh -huh. and a cherry tree or something uh -huh. and it'll say exactly what it is and oh. the latin the latin name and it's real fancy and a, a wonderful but it only seems to work for people who have sight all right so this is not an accessibility app this is just a a, a mainstream an app. okay okay all right i have no experience with this um Anybody have any thoughts about this app for Helene? Picture this. Sounds cool. This is, this is Jody. Okay, Jody, go ahead. Yeah, Helene, does your friend turn voiceover off when she's using it and then it works? Yes. And then when you turn voice, oh, okay, okay, then you're right. It is an accessibility thing. Okay, I was afraid of that. <laughs> it was too good to be true, right? This Roy. Roy, go ahead. Helene, you might try just touching explore after you take the picture. 
just put your finger on, just start sliding around the screen. See if maybe it's there and voiceover's just not focused on it. Okay. Is there a word, explore? Just take your finger and just slide around the screen and see if maybe okay. it's on the screen somewhere. Okay. Worth to Ex try. Explore by touch. Yes. All right. Well, Helene, you got to tell us how that works. That sounds pretty cool. Yes. Get lots I'm not of good going information. To spend Twenty nine dollars for the next year. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, you've already you've already invested, so you can yes, try yes. it out. Let us know. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Helene. This is okay. Deb. Yes. Hey, Deb. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, I actually have that app as well, and oh. I've not had a great lot of. It's a plant identifier. That's what. Oh. That's what it's uh, labeled yeah. as, anyway. But. I'm wondering, and I haven't paid the $29.95. I've, <laughs> I've thought about it, but I wonder if it's one of those things that you have to have that, because I have another app or two that has that. It'll come up and it says something like direct touch area, and I never can get those to work very well. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it's that same same kind of a thing. It, it does seem like it'd be a really really cool app if it would work mm -hmm. and uh okay. so i don't know if that's maybe it or not i've got another one and now i don't remember what it was that i was the other day looking at and it came up with that direct touch thing and it just it wouldn't do it oh it's a it was a bird identifier <laughs> okay. and it was by sound wow. and it used yeah, to work cool. real it used to work really cool it you know, you could tap on the name of a bird and it'd show you different sounds that it made and stuff and it would describe it and all this stuff. But now it's gone to that direct touch or whatever and it don't seem to work very well now. Okay, well, thanks for sharing that, Deb. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, Helene would say save your $30, okay? So there we go. <laughs> all right, thank you. Well, I had you. one, this is Jerry, I had one more okay. comment on that. Go ahead. What yeah. if, I, I think there is something within Google and I don't know exactly where it is, but I think you can take a picture of something. I don't know whether plants are included in it or not, but you can take a picture of something and Google will tell you what it is, I think. It, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems okay. like that's true. All right. That's could be, you know, searches the internet for a similar image or something. Okay. All right. Anybody know about that? Searching for images. Okay. We'll have to do some homework on that one, Jerry. All right. Okay. All right. Who's next? Somebody else didn't have a turn. Want to ask a question? This is Debbie Detheridge. Hey, and, there you are. Go ahead. Yeah. And my husband has just recently bought an iPad eighth generation and is having some problems with the Facebook app. And I didn't know we've uninstalled it, reinstalled it. It's when you uh, go to post, he uses voiceover. And when you go to post, he's having issues, just sometimes reading messages. It's the Facebook app has just seemed like on the newer iPads, it's really messed up. And of course, we don't know how to report it. So, you know, but didn't know if anybody else has been having any issues with that. All right. Thank you, Debbie. Okay. Anybody have any help, Debbie? Uh, using Facebook on an iPad, with her new iPad. Oh. Uh, like we said, Facebook sometimes changes, but um, had it ever worked or it's just never worked since you got this new iPad, right? It's not worked since the newer iPad. It works on an older iPad. Okay. All right. Hmm. You've, okay. Anybody? Any thoughts? Oh, I don't usually use my Facebook on my iPad, so I can't help you there, but Okay, going once. Anybody else helping Debbie? All right, Debbie. We'll have to, uh, All nobody right, has thanks. a new iPad. Sorry? Oh, I just said thanks. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Well, hopefully, I'm sorry. We have try. We'll try and see if we can follow this up. This is Herbie. Herbie, go ahead. You know, just one thought I had is make sure screen recognition isn't turned on for the Facebook app. 
um, right. that could affect that would affect how it's displayed. Um, so that's something I would l double check. All right. Thanks, Herbie. Okay, that that recognition is that's that plays into a lot of things. So, okay. All right. Good luck, Dave. Thomas and Grand Junction. Thomas, go ahead. Um, here's another idea. Make sure that the uh, screen is locked. Otherwise, it'll go into portrait and landscape mode when, when you move the iPad around. Right. Rotation lock. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah that's real lock. important. Mm -hmm. Real so. important to have that on. Yep. Okay. Those are some ideas to help troubleshoot. So come back and let us know, and maybe we'll have some better news for you. All right, Debbie. But uh, all right. Okay, who's next? Somebody new or not This is new? Thomas and Grand Junction. Yeah, go I ahead. Have a, I have a yeah. comment for Vince. He was having trouble with the keyboard uh, making letters and, and words. Well, if you go into general and you go over to keyboard and you click on that, in there is a slide typing function that mine was turned on and I didn't see it. Now, when I looked in voiceover, the slide typing feature was turned off, but in that general, it was turned on. Uh -huh. Once I turn that off, if I hold my finger on the letter, it only says the letter. It doesn't say the, how it says knowledge and all that. If you just hold your finger on it, it just says the letter and you can move your finger and it'll say the letter, so. Okay, so check under general as well. Okay, thank you, Thomas, great. All kinds of things to make sure. Check. Anybody else? New question, new comments? Who has a turn? This is Jody. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody talks about screen recognition being annoying and everything, and I've got it turned off, but what exactly does it do? If you turn hey, it on. anybody want to quickly describe screen recognition? Oh, this is Gail. Go ahead. Gail? I, okay, I thought that screen recognition was for websites that were not um, accessible. Um, okay. Was yeah. that, um, was when you turned screen recognition on, was what I understood. Was when, All right, thank you, when, Gail. When, when you guys explained it, but maybe that's what I got from it. Good. Good. Somebody else? Go ahead, Terry. Um, screen recognition, uh, when I've used it, gives me uh, descriptions of things that are that actually show up on your screen, and you would want to use that if um, you don't automatically get descriptions from from Apple because they do a really good job of describing a lot of things now uh, just automatically but if if you don't have that then you can turn screen recognition on and get an idea sometimes of what is actually showing up on your screen okay all right well, well Hope that helps, Jody. Great question. So it comes up a lot on here. Okay. All right. Who's this, next? This David. David, go ahead. Yeah, I find screen recognition to be pretty much useless. I've never really had anything that it worked on. And if I, I used to have it in the rotor because I think it might be there by default. And sometimes I'd be on the messages app <clears throat> and I'd accidentally engage it and everything was all jumbled I, I thought it, my phone was broken you know okay. I mean I because you, you couldn't make yeah that, I mean for some reason it doesn't even work on the Apple apps it okay. makes them worse so mm -hmm. and it does the same thing I think on Facebook too like they said I think the, the guy that had the iPad that might be part of the problem too but this um is... oh, sorry. I, I think what the caller was talking about was is that image recognition feature which is different um where it what gives you like extra descriptions of pictures and images. So we may be okay. confusing the, the two. Okay. Yes. Okay, Herbie. Sorry, oh. I wasn't sure when you were done. Oh, okay, wait. David, are you finished? 
Yes, I'm done. Okay, thanks. Okay, go ahead, Harvey. So screen recognition is supposed to make something inaccessible try to be more accessible. So you don't want to, if an app's already working for you, you don't want to use it. But if an app is not displaying correctly, then it's when you want to give it a try. I have actually had some luck with it on a couple of apps. Oh, I forget which one I was doing something with late, um, recently, and I couldn't get a button to show up. And so I enabled screen recognition. Might have been a TV app, but I enabled screen recognition and I could actually click double tap on the button successfully. So, um, yeah, you only want to use it in areas where you find um, an app is not accessible. All right. But Thanks, Herbie. All right. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? New question. This is Shree. Shree, go ahead. I wanted to make a comment and a question. Um, Regarding the question about podcasts for Apple, where when you get an incoming call, it starts all over. For me, it left. It started where it left off, so I'm not exactly sure. I listened to a few of them and made some phone calls, and it continued where it left off. Um, the question I have is, I was sending a text message to a new contact where I had her first name and her last name, I only had her initial. So when I sent her a text message, like I said, it was great catching up with you. Her last name was started with letter C. So every word that has a letter C in it, it kept saying C period. And instead of saying catching up, it said C period up. Like it was not reading the word. And I was wondering if anyone has experienced that. Oh. I hope it made sense what I said. Okay. So the contact is, you created a contact, and I'm not sure what's happening when you type the message. No, so I, I basically, this is great. I basically dictated a message saying, hey, it was great catching up. Her last name starts with the letter C. So in the contact, you know, it's the iMessage says, you know, it's semi C period. Yeah. So every time it had a letter C in any of the words that I dictated, it would say C period. And instead of saying like catching up, it would say C period up. Oh. Is what voiceover okay. would read back to me. Okay. Ah, anybody have this experience? <laughs> I'm still not quite sure how that can be, how that's happening or what's I, happening. I don't either. But okay. Anybody? All right, Shri. No. On my own again. Yep. Back so on this is own. Nikki. This is Nikki. Um, okay. I had a similar problem when I wanted to. I wanted to shorten the words. Like I put for my name, I put N I and N I. It says Nicolette. And um, but there's there's another one like uh, S F. It always says San Francisco. So I have to make sure that I that I check over on the left-hand side to see that it says SF. Now, I don't know if you have that ability when you're sending an email, but somehow at some point, maybe you put a C in there with a period to, as, as I forget what they call them, but you know, you just hit one key and then it throws, it throws up a word that you've already set up at some point. And maybe you did that and forgot. This is Shree. Right, yeah, text replacement. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So when I use the rotor to character, it's spelling catching up. Oh, it's just voiceover not reading it properly. Yeah, voiceover is reading saying. that last, her last name initial, it sees it as, it's almost like, you know how with iMessages, you can do notification or notify me what the conversation is and it kind of uh -huh. underlines the person. So it's like, does that with every letter C in every word. <laughs> wow. so any, so and it has a c it'll say c period and says the last part of the word all right shri i don't know I, I, i'm not i'm not drinking uh, well, shri, I, I, okay I hang wonder... on hang on hang on okay wait before okay who is the first person there was somebody go ahead, go ahead helene yeah yes i i have an idea and i don't know if it would work but you should edit the person's name and just change yes it so that yes i well he probably already tried that okay thank you helene all right guys we are getting close to the end jerry you have a quick comment i, I just have a quick comment i i think uh it kind of got lost in the shuffle here but 
uh, it, it would be probably a good idea to check your uh, in the settings for your, your uh, replacements. I, I really think that that could be what's what's messing you up there. You know. Yep. All right. Okay. Tree. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. Okay. So guys, we are at the end of our call. Maria, thank you so much for helping me facilitate tonight. Thank you. Beginning Thanks of everyone. May. And so real quick recap for tomorrow. We have Clubhouse. We're going to be talking about Mac Buzz on Clubhouse from five to six, all time central. Thursday is the next generation uh, Star Trekkie talk. And that's from eight to nine 30 and season four episodes 14 and 15 then movie night i've been out at the virtual movies friday we're going to be just watching watching oh steel, Mag steel, steel magnolias. magnolias yes steel magnolias and then on saturday come for this it'll be lots of fun we're going to be um, doing ibug unplugged where we get to know each other hopefully we want to get to know each other we want to get to know each other we're fun um come and just share your thoughts it's going to be called kids stuff who knows what that is about but we will find out so that's here on zoom all right and then remember our drawing that's going on soon will be coming to a close on on um, may 21st when our uh, meeting our anniversary celebration ten dollar gets you a chance to win a five hundred dollar gift card to the apple store and fifty dollars gets you six tickets and there's no limit if you want to buy lots of tickets that's great we would love to have that support all right and with that definitely visit our website ibugtoday.org and get all the information and register and all that good stuff okay with that we will say good night and have happy good mother's night. day to all the moms out there and Indeed. enjoy your week weekend every day is mother's day so there you go very nice uh, what about father's day It'll be Father's In Day soon. All right. Okay. Here we go. Good night, y'all. All right. Have Bye. a good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.